Hi, let us try an example in designing reinforced concrete elements. What we have here is an final exam equivalent questions, which you can consider this as a revision for you undertaking the reinforced concrete design one. Bear in mind that the questions may not cover every single aspect of the design. However, it gives you an overview on the main parts of the design. You can take this opportunity to try out yourself, see whether you can answer the entire questions as a means for you to do some self-assessment. Without further ado, let us get started. First, there is a structural key plan given. There are a lot of information shown in the structural key plan. You will see the beams, the columns, the slabs, the details of the beams and the thickness of the steps are given. The dimensions of the members are also given. There is a void without any slab at the middle of the key plan. Read the notes. It states that all dimensions are in mm. That means the 5600 are on basis of the mm. The thickness of 150 is also in mm. And the beam size is also in mm. Having this structural key plan understood, let us look into the details. It is stated that the concrete weight is 25 kN per meter cube, the brick wall weight 2.7 km per meter square, the floor finishes, ceilings, and building services, which are the permanent actions, 0 0.85 kN per meter square. Variable actions 2.5 kN per meter square and then the story height 4 meters. Be careful with the units given. Some are in terms of the volume, while some are in terms of the areas. And then the general specifications. The concrete strength 30 Newton per mm square, FYK 500 Newton per mm square. Characteristic yield strength of the shear link 250 Nm per mm square. Nominal cover 30 mm. Aggregate size 20 mm. And the intended reinforcement bars. Compression bar intended to have H20. Where else the tension bar H20? You know the hash bars are referring to the FYK 500 Newton per mm square. And then for the shelling, mouse steel bar R8. Its characteristic strength is 250 Newton per mm square. Assume that there are brick walls on all the beams and the columns are aligned in the center of the grid line. First, you are asked to determine the size of the following structural element. Beam A1 to 4, it is referring to this beam. From the structural key plan, the beam size it will be 150 times 450. Beam B1 to 4 is referring to this beam. B1 to Four. The beam size is 200 times 450. The units are in mm. And then beam 1 A to D is referring to this beam 1 A to D. The beam size is 150 times 450. And then beam 2 A to D. Beam 2 a to D. The beam size is 150 times 500. Next, you are to determine the slab BC12. 
BC12. That means you are talking about this slab. The thickness is 150mm. And then slab BC23. BC2 and 3. There is a void here. There is no slab. With that, you have identified the sizes of all the structural elements listed here. Next, we are asked to determine type of the slab based on the classifications of Table 3.15 in British Standard at 110. Refer to the British Standard at 110. Table 3.15 is about the shear coefficients due to the rectangular panels. The list of the classifications are listed here. Coming back to the structural key plan, you need to first know the classifications of each slab before you can acquire the right shear coefficients for you to compute the UDL acting on the beams. First, let us look at the panels here. When you do not have any adjacent slabs, these are considered discontinuous edge. When you have adjacent slabs, these are continuous edge. The classifications in table 3.15, it will be based on the type of the edge, whether it is continuous or discontinuous. Coming back to this panel, you have two discontinuous edge. They are side by side. Therefore, this panel it will be two adjacent edges discontinuous, referring to these two discontinuous edges. Same goes to this. You have two adjacent edges discontinuous. This and this. There are two adjacent edges discontinuous. Next, we look at this panel. The discontinuous edges, it will be this and this. You do not have any slab here. Since this is a void here, you also do not have any slab here. These two edges are continuous. Now, if you look at the classification here, there are three types of slabs with two edges discontinuous. It is either two adjacent edges, two short edges, or two long edges discontinuous. Coming back to this slab here, the discontinuous edges are not adjacent to each other. It is opposite to each other. That means it is not two adjacent edge discontinuous. Look at the dimensions. You know the discontinuous edges are the longer edge. Therefore, it is classified under two long edges discontinuous. Same goes to this one. Although the dimensions are different, now the discontinuous edges here is longer than the continuous edges. Therefore, it is also classified as the two long edges discontinuous. Next, let us look at this slab. These are continuous edges and these are discontinuous edges. The discontinuous edges are the shortest band. Therefore, this slab it will be two short edge discontinuous. Same goes to this one. Since the questions is asking us to determine the type of the slab based on the classifications, you may classify the slabs 
as per indicated in the figure here. However, bear in mind that there are one-way and two-way snaps. The table 3.15 is basically used to determine the shear coefficients of two-way slabs. The shear coefficients is used to determine how the loads are to be distributed to the adjacent beams. The meaning of two-way slab is that there will be load distributed to all the four adjacent beams. One way and another way. However, when the LY per LX, which is the longer span divided by the shorter span, when the ratio is more than 2.0, the slab will become one-way slab. Assuming that the loads will be distributed in one direction and not to be distributed to the other directions. These are the symbols to indicate whether the slab is one way or two way. In the case that the slab is two ways, in order to determine the loads being taken by the adjacent beam, it refers to table 3.15. As for the one way slab, you will assume half of the loads go to this beam and another half goes to the other. Assuming that there is no loads taken by this two beam, the loads will go for the longer span of the beam. If this span is longer than this, it should go this way. If this span is longer than this, then the load will go the other way.